for those of you who don't know what Truffle is, it's a framework that allows you to test and deploy smart contracts into your own personal clients or into other clients such as Gap. So ideally what you would do is to go and take a, a command to install Truffle into your own uh, computer. So it would look something like this, like I can install Truffle and you would run this command and it would download the Truffle library into your computer. If you have a Mac, if you have a Windows, you have to go through a setup to get some environment variable set up. I will share a link later in how to do that. So since I have this already installed, I don't really need to go through this, but you would just run this command and it would download it for you. Then you would also need to install the Ganache client, which is uh, essentially your own personal client where you can develop and test smart contracts. Uh, so you're not connected to the main chain, you have your own private node running. Um, so let's start that. I also have that already downloaded, so there's no need to download it. So uh, this is a part of the Truffle framework. It allows you to have your own personal node here. And what's neat about it is that it creates some accounts for you that are pre-filled with Ether and that you can use uh, in order to test and develop any type of smart contract. So we have this running and uh, I'm not sure, uh, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. This is just a client running. Yeah, there we go. So here you have these accounts. And so now we're gonna use Truffle. So once you have Truffle installed, there's different commands that you can use. So for instance, if we just do this, it will give you a list of all the different commands you can use. So you can initialize any project that you have, then it allows to compile and then deploy these projects into your own personal network as well as into um, the public network. So for the purposes of this, I'm just gonna focus on using the personal network um, called Ganache. And so what we can do is create a project and then Truffle offers some out of the box projects that you can download and it comes already with some smart contracts so that you can start uh, playing with it and also use it to add your own application and use that to develop and deploy the smart contracts. So what we can do is create a folder. Uh, let's call it uh, Metacoin. And let's go inside Metacoin. So we're creating a folder and then we're gonna use one of those Truffle pre-compiled um, libraries so that you can get a sense of how to use it and what things you can leverage from that. So let's unbox Metacoin. So what this is doing, it's creating a, a series of folders where you can uh, create your own application and where you're gonna store smart contracts, uh, migration files and testing files. So now that I run this command, I can go into my desktop and go into, uh, Ooh, where did it put this? Oh, my bad. So, so here's the folder and then these are the contracts generated as well as immigration files and the testing files. So when you run this truffle command, essentially what it does is it creates all of these folders and it brings some smart contracts. So you can open these smart contracts and see what is there. So this is a library that will be linked to the smart contract through the migration files. This is the Metacoin contract. Um, if you're familiar with Solidity, you know that you have to specify uh, what version of Solidity you're using. And then you can reference libraries or other smart contracts by using this import statement. And so here you just have a very simple smart contract. Um, you have a constructor, you have some functions that you can call. And 
this is another smart contract that allows you to migrate uh, contracts into the network. So you'll always need to use this one. And then these migration files are JavaScript files that are basically um, indicating what contracts are gonna be migrated, what are their names, and then here you can use this to link uh, libraries and link smart contracts. So to link them, you can use the link function, which basically indicates a dependency between a smart contract and a library or another smart contract. So this is how it's structured in Truffle. And then it allows you to deploy contracts without necessarily having to set up Web3 or go through a more complicated process for those of you who might have already deployed contracts into the network not using Truffle. Um, there's also this Truffle JS file, which, uh, sorry, this one. Uh, yeah, so these will, this needs to be configured in order to be able to interact with the network so that when you try to deploy a contract into the network, it will know which one to look at. So if you're using a port 8545, you have to specify that here. If you're using port 75 or 45 or any type of port, you would specify this here. So now we can go back here. Let me close this. And then you can compile these contracts. So you can essentially grab these contracts. You can create new contracts and put them in the contract folder and then compile them and verify that there's no errors with them. So you can run truffle compile and this will look at your smart contracts and let you know if there's any errors or warnings and it will create also, if it runs successfully, uh, so a JSON file, which is what is used to issue calls of functions into the network. So if we go back to that Metacoin folder, you would actually be able to see a JSON file that's been generated. And so now we're going to do the migration, which is essentially deploying the contract into the network, which is as simple as running truffle migrate. Uh, when you try to do this in a different way, for instance, you would have to set up your web three, you have to put out that uh, JSON, that JSON or API format into a variable and pass that through different functions in order to deploy it. Here, it's very simple. You just run truffle migrate and it deploys your smart contract. Uh, but I forgot one little detail. So that file that I was showing you before, the truffle config file needs to have uh, the specifications of which client and which port it's looking at. So just give me one second while I get that. So do you have any questions so far? So let's use this. Uh, let's see which port are we connected to. 8545. Cool. So I think this is what it was missing. So if we run this again, it should be able to deploy it. Give me one second.
which called the JSON. Uh, yes, I copied and pasted. Usually it comes auto-generated. Uh, there's different examples of what you can do. You can set up things like gas cost, gas prices, um, but this is just a standard one that you would find in most projects. Um, no, that's just Um, I think I'm having some issues with the uh, deployment, uh, the curse of having a live demo <laughs> never goes 100% properly, but um, Let's close this one. Can you find me on GitHub? Yes, you can find me on GitHub. Uh, I can provide that after. Uh, do you wanna take over, Sarah? I can give you control of this. Oh, okay. Let me Okay. Oh, there we go. Um, okay. I gave you control because if you want to try. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm used to toggling mute on and off, like at will. Uh, no, worries. no, I was just gonna suggest if you just um, there, there's trouble has updated itself a lot lately, and I've run into so many like frustrating little problems, like just depending on what version I'm using. Yeah. Uh, you don't need the truffle. That it, this might work. This is a different version of truffle. No, I thought it was worth a try. Mm. I'm not sure. I think I can try a different example just out of the box because this is the recompile uh, recompile contract. So I guess there's some character displaced uh, in a weird place. Okay. We'll try another sample just so you girls can see this. Uh, Where, uh, what 
is going on with Truffle? Did I misspell this? this and I'll start it again once it's um, setting up. Cool. So again, as you can see, um, there's the contracts, migration, um, and testing folders that have been created, but this example specifically also has an app built in so that you can run that in a server to see. So that's a different example of one you can use. So I'm going to, again, try to compile this and deploy it. So it seems like it has deployed. Let's start again. Let's start again our own node. And let's see at this time. Can actually deploy the contract. So let's see. I think it's going to do. Eighty-five, thirty-five. This is eighty-five. Yeah, sorry guys, I don't know what's going on with the uh, truffle, but it's not able to connect to the client that I'm using for some reason. Um, but what we can do is that we can look at Remix and see how that would be deployed into this personal client and how you can interact that way. Yeah, do you want me to try screen sharing, Vanessa? Yes, I will let you screen share. Cool. Um, you have access to that? Can you screen share? Yes, but first I will open Remix in a new tab so you don't see my terrible tab slobbiness. Are you sharing your screen? I will be very soon. Cool. Um, so yeah, this is another option. Um, yeah, Truffle can, they've gone through a lot of changes recently. So uh, I've, I've had uh, some trouble with the updates lately too. Um, but anyway, this is a browser-based IDE for Solidity that has some really nice features um, that I will just try to run through quickly. So I'm just going to fetch um, a contract. This is um, just a standard uh, ERC-20 contract uh, that consensus maintains in If I open something in a new tab, can you guys see that? This repo here. Um, 
So yeah, this is just a, a token doesn't do much besides that, uh, besides be a token. Um, and we can compile it. And so uh, unable to import. Let's go to the interface. So this gives you some nice things. Um, in the browser, it's running a JavaScript version of uh, the Solidity compiler. So it's going to give you any warnings um, that might get thrown. Some of them are a little more optional uh, to ignore than others. Um, so this one is not going to necessarily break anything. It's just a Solidity command that is deprecated. Um, and then once we've successfully compiled this, we haven't actually edited the code, so it compiles no problem. We can choose um, our uh, sort of client or what we want to use to run and test our smart contract, where we want to deploy it. This is um, analogous to what Vanessa showed you with the um, Ganache CLI, uh, which is a local version of the Ethereum client. Here we have um, just a browser-based JavaScript VM. And I think this might actually be running something akin to Ganesh uh, inside, um, because it similarly starts up a bunch of accounts with you and pre-stocks them all with Ether. Um, so when we want to create our contract, you can't actually deploy the interface. We need some variables, so let's give ourselves a thousand. Oh, no, I want to see those initial amount, token name. Okay, so these are the variables that are used in the constructor. So we have to supply them when we create it. So initial amount, let's say 1,000. Uh, token name, let's call it CryptoChicks coin. Uh, token decimal units. Uh, typically 18 is kind of standard. Token symbol. Let's hope I've formatted those properly. Cool. Uh, so then we get this little sort of ticket that represents all of the callable methods on our contract. Um, and, 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 and this is, is just a graphical representation of what Vanessa showed you, which is the um, the ABI or that that JSON file of, uh, that you would provide to your application, so it understands the contract. Uh, so this is a public method that we can just call and see that our total supply that we set was a thousand. Our symbol is CCC, the name CryptoChix coin, etc. Um, so as the deployer of the contract, I can copy my address and I can request my balance here. Um, I believe that uh, when you deploy the standard ERC-20 token, it gives the total supply to the contract deployer uh, right here. Nope, nope, nope. Well, let's just see what my balance is. It has given me the total supply. Nope. Which where does it actually do that? This is a standard practice for tokens, though. Here it is. Um, 
So let's see, let's, uh, transfer some tokens and then look at the debugger because it's handy. So this is my another address generated by uh, this VM. Let's transfer this address. 100 of my tokens. And go back to my initial address. And we can just call the transfer method by clicking this button. So this is like, unlike Truffle, this isn't going to give you sort of an automated test suite that you can write, but um, it's going to make manual testing really easy and visual. Uh, so we can look at the details of the transaction that we just sent. Uh, it's calling the transfer method. You can see the args. And we should be able to confirm that that worked by checking the balance of this address that we just sent to. Hopefully this is 100. Cool. Um, all the events thrown. But that's not all we can do. Um, this is my favorite thing about Remix. Um, should this transaction have not succeeded? And actually, you know what? Let's just send a transaction that will fail. Uh, so let's send, our total supply is only 1,000. So let's try to send this person uh, 2,000 of my coin. And we'll see we've had an error. Uh, the transaction was reverted. Execution failed. If we click debug here, we can actually step through the function and the contract execution uh, line by line and look at where it actually failed or how far along it executed before we ran into that error. So first we start, we call it the transfer method, cool. It's just looking at the various things. The first check it's gonna do is this require here, it's gonna check that message sender me has value. And here we can see it doing the check, but we can also see that we're at the very end of our transaction. So when we're writing a smart contract and trying to figure out, you know, why, uh, what line of code our, our, our uh, function calls are getting stuck on, which of our various checks are failing, um, this is really helpful to sort of pinpoint like where an error is happening and it's really graphical. So it's kind of uh, nice and easy to walk through and it gives you a whole bunch of stuff that you um, may not need to dig into, but is cool if you need to. Um, like any kind of sort of local variable Solidity is using, um, the contract state at every step. Um, so, so yeah, I find walking through this debugger like the most helpful thing for smart contracts. Like often I'll, I'll write them uh, in my text editor using Truffle, but then if I get really stuck, I'll come over and deploy them and walk through them here. Um, so just to return to the sort of run tab in the menu, um, it gives us this JavaScript VM that's all running in browser. This is all local. Uh, nothing is gonna get sent uh, to any kind of network. But once you are ready, you can use uh, Injected Web 3 that is put in there by something like MetaMask. Uh, so you can all now see my Wrinkleby testnet account with uh, nothing in it anyway. Um, but this will uh, read not reading my address.
Try refreshing it. Yeah, I'm just going to switch back to the VM. So sometimes when MetaMask is locked, um, things that are pulling injected Web3 don't, don't properly pull it, um, which is always a bit of a gotcha. Uh, so anyway, if I wanted to, and I can't because I don't have any wrinkle the ether, but if I did, um, I would be able to, this create button here, uh, well, let's just do it. Let's. Actually, okay, that didn't work, but we'll see that uh, it sent the transaction to MetaMask, uh, which could, in theory, send it, if I had a balance, uh, to an actual live test network. So that was a super quick lightning run through of my favorite Remix features. Um, and once this were to be deployed on uh, Wrinkle B, you can, well, this isn't the address, but you would be able to do at address. Well, it's not the right address, but if it were, uh, and then you would get uh, a little panel like we got when we deployed it in the JavaScript VM here, and you could use that to interact with your contracts on Wrinkle B as well, um, or any of the other test nets. So, so yeah, that was a super quick walkthrough um, of Remix. Um, let me just check the chat to see if there's any questions. Nope. Cool. Does anyone have uh, any questions or has anyone used any of these uh, frameworks or editors before? Uh, I think everybody's muted, but they can uh, type in the chat. Well, I'm not seeing any questions. Maybe that means that uh, everything's awesome and y'all already experts, uh, which would be amazing. Uh, is there anything that we didn't talk about at all that would be helpful for people to hear more about or see demoed? Cool. All right, so if there's no questions, I can just share some of the information that I was mentioning before, where to find these. Um, I'll pass the screen share back to you, Kevinessa. Uh, all right, I think I'm done presenting what I'm doing. I've been trying to figure out what's wrong with Truffle and I'm not sure what's going on with it right now. So unfortunately, I'm not able to uh, show you how to deploy through Truffle. I will try and uh, find some screenshots and send that later. But otherwise, I think this will be it. I don't know if uh, Constantine has anything you want to add. No, thank you very much, Kills. No problem. I hope this was uh, helpful and best of luck in the hackathon. <laughs>